So this video is not going to be anything special, I'm just kind of bored, so I figured I'd go ahead and record as I make one of the assets for the Patreon series, and that is going to be an empty casing for the 556 cartridge. Now this is just going to be for an effect to play, so whenever you shoot your the gun in game, it's going to eject an empty casing. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and create, texture, and I figured I'd just show you kind of my quick little process on doing so. So first thing I do is I open up Blender, A, and delete everything. Go ahead and get rid of that timeline. And this is roughly the measurements that I'm going to go off of. So starting from the side view by pressing 3 on the number pad, I'm going to shift A, create a new mesh, and it's going to be a cylinder. I'm going to drag this up, so I'm going to press G, then Z, and hold left control to snap it. Bring it to the center, and set the origin point to the 3D cursor so it's right in the middle. You can also do this by pressing F3, type set origin, and just do origin to 3D cursor. I just did a quick access because I use it a lot. Next up, I want to rotate it, so I'm going to do the same thing. Press R, but press con or hold down control as well, and drag it 90 degrees so it's facing that direction. And then I want to scale it down quite a ways. So, pressing in, I can bring up this panel here. I'm just going to control A and hit all transforms and start trying to work with the measurements. So, oh, this isn't centimeters, cool. So, the total length is going to be about four and a half centimeters. So, on the y axis, the green, we want to go about 4.5 cm for centimeters. Now, as far as the width goes, I would say that is about roughly a centimeter, uh, I could be way off here, or sorry, a millimeter, no, centimeter, could be way off here, so for the Z and X, I'm just going to do 1 cm, and 1 cm, like so, and then starting from about 3 and 3 quarters of a centimeter, the neck starts to taper, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and control A and hit all transformers again to set the scale, then I'm going to go into edit mode, and something I just realized, I am in a lot of a much more detailed case than I would like. I forgot to set the actual uh, amount of edges or faces. I don't know what you'd call it. So I'm going to recreate this real quick. So shift A, cylinder, come down here, and I'm going to reduce the vertices from 32. Let's bring this to... Uh, something along the lines of probably, let's do 18. That should be okay. Then same thing again. Snap it. Whoops. Set origin. Rotate it. And just scale it way down. And apply the transforms. And set the same things back over here. So 0 point, or sorry, 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter. Then we have four and a half, so 4.5 centimeters. And then I'm going to delete the old one. So here's our new casing. And to kind of get a rough look of what it's going to look like, I'm going to go ahead, right click, shade smooth, come down here to uh, object data properties, normals, and check auto smooth. And to me, that looks pretty round, aside from just the faces here. So I'd say that's good to go, because the player is probably not even going to be able to have any chance to notice anyways. So honestly, we could have probably went nearly half with the vertices, but it's not that big of a deal. Anyhow, oops. We, let's see, so about yeah, three and three quarters for centimeters, we go, we start to taper the neck. So this, each of these lines right here, the thick, the slightly brighter ones, these are all centimeters. So we're going to go one, two, three, and three quarters, and that's going to bring us to about here. So I'm going to go into edit mode, control R to loop cut, and drag it about to the three quarter mark. It'll be about here. I'm going to go ahead and go press Z, go to wireframe, select all of these faces up here. And I'd say they're scaled by about three quarters of that, so probably something along the lines of here. 
And at the four centimeter mark, the neck tapers back to being straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control R, drag it all the way to the left, then press G, Y, and drag it to the four centimeter point right here. Now, if you're having a hard time getting it where you want, what you can do is while you're moving it, you can hold left shift, and that'll slow the movement at which you move it. So here we have that, and that's quite an aggressive neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually scale it up a little bit. So I'm gonna press Alt and left click, then Alt Shift and left click, and scale this up some. Let's bring it up about there. Now we have to move these back again, so Alt left click, and just bring it back to four centimeters. Same thing up here, but bring it back to four and a half centimeters, like so. Keep pressing Control S out of habit. I should actually go ahead and save this. So uh, let's do empty case temp. So here we have the basic shape set up. There's a couple more things, so if we look back at it, the it's not a rimmed cartridge, however there is a spot here where the extractor grabs on. We have to taper that down. So starting at, let's see, that would be about a little over a quarter of a centimeter up. The neck, well this is where the neck would initially start. Not the neck, sorry. I don't know what this little section is actually called. But, so it is about, so we have half a centimeter right here. It would put us about at this point. So we're gonna control R half a centimeter, and go to about here, like so. Then we want to taper down just a little bit, and then we go right back out. So control R in here. Let's go ahead and just right click to leave it in the middle and scale it down some. And assume about here. Press control Y, or sorry, G then Y to move it on the Y axis. Let's look at it. So we have a relatively long taper there, so let's move it back a little bit, about here. And then we go right up into pretty much a wall where we exit it. So control R again, drag it all the way left so it's at that same size, G then Y. And I'm just gonna do it right here for right now. Control R again, drag it all the way to the right, G then Y, and bring it over. So now to make this an actual wall, what we could do is we could set our snapping mode to vertex, select this whole uh, edge loop here, G, Y, and then if we press control with our cursor right over one of these vertices, like so, it snaps it like that. And that'll make it perfectly in line over, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much vertical there. So that's what we're going to leave it. So we're going to leave it like that. And that gives us this result here. So what we're going to do now is I want to have the neck be completely open. So that way, you know, you can kind of see in it. So what I want to do is press 3 or press up here to go into face select. Select the face, press I to inset inset it a little bit. I'm going to go a little overboard for the sake of visuals, about like so. Then we want to extrude it back. So we're going to press E, then Y, and we can go, or sorry, press Y again, so we're on the global axis, and we can move it back pretty much as far as we want. So I'm back, how far am I? I'm right here. So for my sake, I'm just going to Actually, it probably wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea just to leave it. Yeah, we'll go about here, and I'm just going to snap it. So that's as far in as it goes, and I'm I'm happy with that. So we have our case done. Now this is going to be our low poly. I'm going to do a not really a high poly. I'm not going to bother adding more roundness or anything to it to try to smooth out the edges. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to create the high poly and it's going to have a primer pocket here with the primer in it and that's the part that we're going to actually bake 
And uh, I'm going to use Marmoset for this, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this object to empty case underscore low. And we're pretty much done with it. The only thing I want to do now is I want to actually unwrap it. So I'm going to go to UV editing. Let me scroll back in over here. And I want to select this guy right here, the sync selection. So that way anything that's selected over here, we can see like that. And then I want to start unwrapping. However, we can't see the stretches yet. I'll show you an example. So what we're going to do is press A, U, then unwrap. It's not scaled. Oh, we need to apply the scale. So control A and just do all transforms. And then do this exact same thing again. I'm not too fond. I kind of want these edges to be sharper here. So I'm going to go back into layout, edit mode, and press 2, or go into edge select. Select this edge, then shift select this edge. And do the same back here, shift select, shift select. I think that should be all. And we're going to right click, mark sharp. So now when we look at it, our shading is no longer smooth. It is now sharp. And that's what I want. I want it to give it a more, in my opinion, accurate representation. It looks better than being smooth like this, and at least to my eyes. So just mark those as sharp and go back to the UV editing. Let me move this in. So now we want to unwrap it. The way we can do that is we can uh, press A to select all, U, and unwrap. Now that didn't really do anything, but we have to, we're going to go ahead and specify the seams. And if this is actually how it unwrapped itself, that's pretty good. So I'm going to alt left click this top edge loop right here, like so. It's going to go all the way down and across. And I'm going to right click, mark seam. Press A to select all, and then press U to unwrap again. And here's the result of the unwrapping. And that's obviously not good. And if we kind of view the stretching, you can see that it's pretty bad. So I'm going to press N, View, Overlays, and check stretching. Now we want it to be a solid blue, or at least close as we can to a solid blue. Anytime we start to get over here to the green, yellow, anything like that, that means there's some stretching that's occurring and we have to fix that. So obviously this should be in separate parts. So I'm going to select this face by doing Alt, left click around it, right click, mark seam, and unwrap again. And as you can tell, that fixed one side of it. We still have the other side. So let's come around to the front, select the inner loop right here, U, or sorry, right click, mark seam, A, U, unwrap, and here's our case. So I'm going to go ahead and scale. Let's see, can I even do that? No, of course not. It's going to grab everything else around it. So we are pretty much good to go. Here's our UV unwrapping of this entire case. And yeah, now let's create the high poly, which is just going to be a duplicate, but with a primer pocket set up. And we're going to work on that. So back into layout. I'm going to shift D, then right click, duplicate it and snap it back to the center and hide our low poly and rename this duplicate to underscore high. So now let's go into edit mode, face select by pressing three or clicking up here, click this back face where the extractor would grab and I'm going to inset it down to about well, that's not giving much of a reference, but about in this area here, just to make it more obvious for the end game purposes, I want to make it a little bit bigger than normal. Now I want to take this, I want to press I to inset again, just a little bit. Let me not change so I don't clip. So I want to press N, go to view, clip start, just add another zero or the one, and you're pretty much good to go. Move my camera out of the way so I can get a little bit 
more close up here. So here's our inset. I'm going to press E to extrude it. And I'm just going to extrude it on the Y axis, about like so. Then I'm going to press I, or I to inset again. To make it more obvious, I'm going to inset a little bit drastically, and this is going to be our primer. So I'm going to press E and Y twice to extrude it back on the Y axis and leave it like this. But I want to snap it so it's perfectly in line. So with Vertex as our uh, snapping type, I'm going to press G, then Y. And then on one of these right here, I'm going to hold left control. As you can see, it's snapping it in place and then left click. So now we have the primer pocket with the primer in it right there like so. Now we can make this a decent bit neater as well if we wanted to. We could control B and just bevel it, which I'm going to do. I'm just going to do, do four. And this is what it's going to look like. Now I want it to protrude a little farther, so I'm going to press G, then Y, and drag it out about like so. So this is what it looks like from the rear. And this data right here is going to get baked in. So again, I'm going to go ahead and now also select this loop here, Control B to bevel, and just kind of slightly do it, just so it's smoother and not such an abrupt edge. And everything else inside of there, we're not going to be able to see anyway, so it really doesn't matter at all. And yeah, now if we really wanted to, we could go through and we could bevel all this out to make it smoother, but I'm not going to bother with it. So here's our high poly. Now what I want to do is I want to actually, I want to create an ID map, so that way we can have an easy way to distinct or have distinguished between the colors when we're working in Marmoset for texturing. So we can have the brass for the case and a silver color for the primer. So I'm going to go back and unhide my low poly. And we're going to have to create two materials right here for it. Well, actually, no, we can't because those are working with vertices. So never mind. Scratch that. I'm going to, yeah, we're good to go, actually. I hope anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and export these out. So with the low poly selected, file, export, FBX, desktop, and I'm just going to create a folder, new folder. Uh, let's see. Empty case temp. Open that up. And just kind of call this one empty case. Now for the export settings, I'm going to change limit to selected objects, uncheck, sorry, only ch check a mesh by clicking on it. Go to geometry. For smoothing, we're going to set that to face. My modifiers, even though we don't have any, and uncheck bake animation. It's pretty much everything by default. And if you want to be lazy, you can press the plus symbol and save a profile like I have here. So my no animation profile is always for static and skeletal meshes without animation. And then my animation profile here is for exporting just the animation. So I'm going to select no animation. It's the same thing. The only difference is I have armature and mesh selected. And just a uh, empty case, we're going to add underscore low and export. Do the exact same thing, but for the high poly. File, export, wrong format, FBX and change it to underscore high and export. So now we have this guy right here. We have both of these. I'm going to go ahead and open up Marmoset set tool bag. Go over here. I'm going to right click. Add bake project. Come down here to load. I'm going to go to desktop. Empty case temp and select both of these meshes with underscore low and underscore high, and it's going to put them into their corresponding groups right here, like so. And then for the output, I'm going to leave it right here. I'm just going to give it a name of empty case. And I'm going to change the uh, type to Targa and hit save. So let's go ahead and go 
Wow, that is way out there for the rotation. I just want to get close to my model so I can see the baked result. It'll take me a little bit at this rate. Good grief. All right, here we are. Here's our case. So going to the bake, the, uh, bake project, what I want to do is I want to make it so I can actually see the change when I bake it. And right now I only have normals checked, which is what I want. So to do that, I'm going to press this P button here so I can view the uh, bake in progress. And as you can see, that's the result here. So I can go ahead and hit bake. And what's wrong? Get out of the image. Doesn't matter. It gives me this uh, normal map right here. So if I open this normal map, we should see this result here. So we can see where it baked the detail for the primer pocket and primer. Whoops. Like so. So that's good. Now we're pretty much good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new texture project now. So I'm going to go to layers, add texture project, get it back to materials, and drag and drop default into the linked materials. And as you can see, that uh, the primer pocket went away. It's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, delete the high poly. I'm going to grab my empty case underscore low and just drag it out here and delete the bake project because it's no longer needed and it's just kind of cluttering up the area. Now in the texture project, we can click on the little square box for our normal and we can select our normal map. And as you can see, it brings that primer pocket right back. And then from here, we are going to go ahead and start texturing the case. So you can tell there's no, um, there's no actual geometry there. It's just baked on. So I'm going to click on our default underscore high and delete it. Go to layers, go to materials, let's go to metal. Could have a brass material already downloaded somewhere. Here it is, brass. Just going to drag and drop. And here's our brass material, which I'm actually going to leave as is, and I just want to paint the primer. So we have our brass material. Now what I'm going to do is I want to find a silver, something... Aluminum's not really that iron might be pretty good. Let's see. Another kind of a rough surface, they're not super smooth. So I'm thinking. What does iron look like? No. Aluminum brushed. That's a good bit better. I can work with aluminum brushed. So I'm gonna drag and drop the aluminum brushed out to here and bring it up because I want it to be on top of the brass. I'm going to right click, or actually better yet, just delete that and I'm going to add a new paint layer. Click this little left pointing arrow right here. And I'm going to drag and drop the aluminum brushed into this section here so that way anywhere I paint shows the aluminum brush. Now perspective, I'm going to go to back and zoom way in. Oh, hey, that's a lot. And simply kind of just scale my uh, brush up and do a paint. Or I'm going to do like one kind of solid click. Right, so let's go down about 50. Let's put 65. 70. That's pretty close. Yeah, I like that. So let's get roughly in the center as close as we can and left click. Now when we go, oops, now when we go back to perspective, we can see the result right here, which I need to work on a little bit, so I'm not very happy with that. So if I click on tool settings, here we can, here let me just left click for example, you can see it's got a soft edge. So if I crank up the hardness, now we got a full hardness, and that's what I want. So I'm going to actually... Probably just slightly crank up the hardness and then make my brush bigger so that way it kind of it still fades out a little bit but it covers the whole area because remember this detail here is baked let's go back to the back view control z until it's gone which it is and let's bump that up to 0.75 for the hardness 
And let's just uh, go ever so slightly. Actually, that's about the max it's we're going to get, because if you look around the outside, it's kind of slowly filling those in. We're going to have to be like right here and left click. Look at it again. And that is much better. So there's our primer. And here's everything else. And we pretty much we have our, well, our complete casing. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, launch Unreal Engine because I'm going to export and give it a try. We'll create a new folder inside of here of our temp folder. I'm going to create new. Let's call it textures and place them in there. What the world did I do here? I don't know why that's showing up as black. Anyhow, the way we're going to export this, we're going to go to scene, materials, select default, scroll down here, and just like in my Play-Doh video, I'm actually going to drop this resolution down to, I'd almost say 2056 should be adequate. I'm going to actually start at 64 by 64 and just see what it looks like. So I have my albedo. All these are as target format. We'll get to the mix map. The red channel is ambient occlusion. Green channel is roughness. And blue is metallic. Then change the path to textures and call it empty case. And hit save. I'm going to go ahead and export all. And that did it pretty much immediately. So now in Unreal Engine, I'm going to give it a quick test. I'll just put them in here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the empty case. Textures, drag and drop. Right click, new material. Just not even going to bother naming. And open up the mix map. Uncheck sRGB. Select all three textures. Drag and drop into the material. And let's plug these up. So base color to base color, normal to normal. Red to ambient occlusion, green to roughness, blue to metallic. And we hit save. We could look over here. We can see the primer pocket right there. Kind of looks really goofy in the material. And let's just name this to empty case, or M underscore empty case. Let's select it. Empty case. Oh, that is very sensitive. moving so much and there we have it so as you can tell 64 by 64 is a little bit too low resolution in our case here so what we're going to want to do golly it's, why is it so sensitive and i can't change it up here i've already scrolled down enough so actually you know what i'm going to drag this out into the world that'll make that a little bit more pleasant i hope Yeah, that's a lot better. So here's our empty case, and we're going to actually increase the resolution a bit. So let's try 128 by 128. We can just simply click up to 128 by 128, export it back in Unreal Engine, just click on the textures and re-import. And that is a lot better right there once everything's done and kind of set up. And that's honestly good enough. Because no one's really going to notice the primer pocket looking like that. But if we wanted to, we could bump this all the way back up to 1024. And just to kind of see what it looks like at a good resolution. Let's let it kind of reload itself. Yeah, and that's roughly what it would look like. So I want to try to get this result. As you can actually see in the material itself, once I find wherever the primer pocket is. Where is it? Oh, this whole big silver thing is it, I think. Or maybe, I don't even know. It doesn't matter. I want to try to get this result with a lower res. So let's try 256, see what that looks like. Let it reload itself. 
and that looks pretty good. That, in my opinion, is a good compromise. It's still holding its shape and still has the basic imperfections around the rest of the brass, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to delete you and delete the rest of these assets like so, and we are good to go. So that's all I'm going to end up actually doing. I'm going to go ahead and save this scene. Case.scene. Yada, yada, yada. Good to go, and good to go. So that is all for this video. Again, not really a, much of a tutorial, just kind of running through what I was doing. I figured someone might get some benefit out of this, so if it helps anybody, then that's a that's a win, I guess. Anyhow, that's going to be all for this video. And as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon series down below where I will be publishing my Team Deathmatch series here shortly. We're currently at 90 videos recorded, and my guess would be 20 or so hours of video content, probably a little more. And it's just keep growing, so I'm hoping to have that out in probably... With any luck, I'll have it done by the end of February, if not middle of March. That should be the, roughly the time frame. At least that's my guess. And for the video count, I would imagine that would probably be about 115 to 130 videos, around in that mark, before we actually wrap it up. So, anyways, if you have any questions regarding that or just in general regarding game development, you can find a link to my Discord server below. And as I already said, the Patreon's down there, and whatever other info related to this there will be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload all of these files, including the blend, in case you want to tinker around with it and see. And that is all. So, see you in whatever other video you end up watching, which is probably none. Bye.